Hello everyone and welcome back to Total Organic Chemistry. This video I will be talking about the sulfur analogs of alcohols and ethers. So those are thiols and thioethers. After this video the questions that you should be able to answer are what are the similarities and differences between thiols and alcohols? How do thiols react in nucleophilic substitutions? And how can I oxidize thiols to disulfides? If you'd like some review on the properties of alcohols or ethers, or the reactions that they undergo, please go ahead and subscribe, and also take a look at my previous videos on that. So a thiol is just like I said, the sulfur analog of an alcohol. So it has this general structure of R, and then we have an SH group here instead of an OH. And thiols actually have a pKa of around 10, whereas alcohols have a pKa of about 16, which means that thiols are much more acidic than alcohols are. They are also much more nucleophilic than alcohols. So whereas alcohols are only weakly nucleophilic on that oxygen, thiols are actually pretty strong nucleophiles. And both of these things are because of the polarizability of the sulfur atom. So because sulfur is so much bigger than oxygen, it's much more polarizable, and it's able to be much more nucleophilic. So for example, if we take a look at two different nucleophilic substitution reactions, we could use the reaction of ethyl bromide here, with methanol as our nucleophile, to form the ether here, so just a very simple SN2 reaction. This would be very slow because, like I said, alcohols are only very weakly nucleophilic on that oxygen. Whereas if we take the same electrophile, ethyl bromide, and react it with methane thiol, in this case, to form this thioether, or sulfide, this reaction will be much faster because sulfur is a much bigger atom, like I said, and therefore the methane thiol will be a better nucleophile. This property extends to thioethers as well, so we could draw this compound here, this symmetrical thioether, which is actually mustard gas. So a very harmful chemical weapon, and its danger is attributed to the following reaction. So we know that this sulfur is nucleophilic, and we actually have a pretty good leaving group on this molecule. So what we can do is have an intramolecular SN2 reaction, where the sulfur swings over to attack this carbon, kicking off the chlorine, and giving us this sulfonium cation, where sulfur now has a plus charge, and now we have two very electrophilic carbons in this three-membered ring, which can react with nucleophiles in the body, which is believed to be a large source of the danger of this molecule. Another thing we can do is oxidize thiols using a mild oxidizing agent to their corresponding disulfides. So for example, we could take two equivalents of methane thiol and treat it with iodine. So elemental iodine is a pretty mild oxidizing agent and maybe in methanol as a solvent to form the disulfide here where we have a disulfide bond, an SS single bond, between our two methyl substituents. So the mechanism for this is fairly simple. We start with the methane thiol, and we also have our iodine in solution, and this II single bond is pretty weak, so our sulfur can come in to pluck off one of those iodines, kicking off the other one, giving us this compound here with the sulfur iodine single bond. And now this sulfur has a plus formal charge, so another molecule of thiol here could come in and attack the sulfur, kicking off the other iodine atom here, which gives us the protonated disulfide. And then finally our molecule of solvent, the methanol in this case, would come off and pull off this hydrogen because it's again the most basic thing in solution. And that gives us the disulfide product. If we can oxidize thiols to disulfides, we can also do the opposite, reduce the disulfides to their corresponding thiols by using another mild reducing agent. So 
we could take this disulfide here that has two ethyl substituents and treat it with sodium borohydride in aqueous solution to give us just two equivalents of this ethane thiol because we have a symmetrical disulfide. And again, this mechanism is fairly simple. We start with our disulfide starting material, and we also have the borohydride reducing agent. And this BH bond can come off to directly attack the sulfur of the disulfide. And at the same time, the bond to the other sulfur atom will break, producing one molecule of ethane thiol in the process. And then we have this thiolate anion here, which we could imagine protonating with this water molecule in solution. So the sulfur could just be protonated by the water to give us the thiol product at the end. However, we know that thiols are going to be more acidic than water or alcohols, right? So this will actually be in an unfavorable equilibrium. And in fact, because the pKa of a thiol is so much lower than that of water, we will probably end up with mostly the thiolate, the deprotonated thiol, instead of hydroxide. And disulfides are very important in our biochemistry because we can have just a simple cartoonish drawing of an amino acid here, where we have just this long chain of an amino acid, and we might have these thiol groups, for example in cysteine, and if we twist this amino acid up so that the SH groups are aligned together, we can perform an oxidation reaction where this turns into a disulfide. So using very similar chemistry to what I just described, we can make what's called a disulfide bridge. And that's very important for the structure of amino acids in your body chemistry. So I hope this video helped you learn something about the sulfur analogs of alcohols and ethers. If you enjoyed this video or learned something about organic chemistry, Please subscribe to my channel and like this video. Like my page on Facebook at Total Organic Chemistry and take a look at my website on the screen. If you're willing and able, consider donating to my Patreon page, which helps me continue to create these types of content for all of you. Thanks for watching.